Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generation 1 Power Master Slapdash, and I love this toy. But before we get into the review, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but it will help me and the channel grow. If you'd like to further help out the channel, please share with your friends if you like what you see. Share this video on social media, invite them to come over, check out the channel, and subscribe as well. Now that we're losing our community options and our notifications, the best way to keep up with the channel is to come back and check it out often. I usually upload one to two videos a week, sometimes more. Finally, if you'd like to further help out the channel, I have placed the donate button up at the top banner. If you want to click on that, I certainly would appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and now let's get on with the review. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generation 1 Power Master Slapdash and his Power Master partner, Lube, and I love these toys. Now, of course, if you are a Master Force fan like myself, you're going to know this guy as Road King instead, and Road King would have actually been the little guy, and then when he combined with the vehicle, he still it was the same person. The vehicle was more of a mobile suit than anything else, so there was uh, not two characters. It was just a one character that turned into the bigger character. So this guy was released in 1988 and retailed for approximately $12 to $15. This is another one of those figures that I recently picked up at my local collector's club meetup, and I couldn't be happier. I got it for a really, really good price. Uh, he wasn't complete, but getting the parts that he needed to complete him was actually not that difficult. And the vehicle mode here is an F1 Formula Racer. It's approximately six and a half inches long and about two inches tall. And we're going to move Lube out of the way just for a moment so we can take a good look at the Formula car because this car is amazing. As you can see, he rolls really nice. He's got those big wheels on him and they just grip the surface real nice. He's got a little bit of squeaking, but he is an old figure, so he's going to squeak. And just going all the way around, this is an absolutely fantastic vehicle mode. The yellows and the blues look really, really nice. They're bright. He's got some, you know, gray details there. But going all the way around, even underneath, there are no robot parts showing. If you did not know, once again, if you didn't know that you're looking at a transformer, you wouldn't know that this is a transformer. Absolutely love that about this figure. Now, this did come with a weapon, which can be used in vehicle mode with this port right here at the top. You can go ahead and plug in his weapon so that you can have him in uh, attack mode, I guess. I'm not a big fan of that, but if that's something you want to do, you can do that. And then taking a, a look at Lube, Lube here is approximately two inches tall, which is, you know, the same size of, as most of these smaller figures. I'm taking in a close look at him and checking out the details. You can see him really nicely sculpted face, blue face, gray body, orange details. And then I absolutely love this chrome on the back of the engine there on the little engine backpack there looks really really nice articulation you can move the le uh, the arms forward and backward and then the legs can move outwards and that's about it now unfortunately this is again uh the issue that i tend to have with target masters and power masters is that there isn't a whole lot for the little partners to do when they are in robot mode and the big robot is in vehicle mode. Um, unlike the headmasters that had little cockpits for their partners to sit in and interact with the vehicle, target masters and power masters really don't have anything for the partners to do when the partners are in robot mode. This, especially if you watch Master Force again, you know that he was a race car driver and was often seen in the seat of the race car. So it would have been nice to have some sort of an opening here to be able to like get him in there and make him look like he's at least sitting in the driver's seat. Something like that would have been nice. There really isn't a whole lot for him to do in this mode. It's really just an engine mode that he can um, interact with both the vehicle and the robot. So just much like the Target Masters where there's really nothing much for the Target Master to do in robot mode. He's kind of meant to be a weapon in both uh, the big robots vehicle and robot mode. Same thing here. This is really meant to be more of a engine slash key for the transformation kind of gimmick thing. So, but still very cool nonetheless. Now we can put him into the vehicle as well. Uh, and that's going to be to unlock the transformation. So we're going to remove the gun and then we're going to take this engine block right here. We can remove this. And just so that the part isn't floating around, we can come around the back and we've got these two ports back here that we can go ahead and plug this engine too so you still got that there and it doesn't look out of place so that's something that you can do and now we've got our power master port there is open and ready for our power master so to transform him into the engine mode we're going to put the arms down 
We're going to bring the legs out to the side. The legs do have a peg. There is a port right there on the shoulder that you can plug these into. And now you've got lube in his little engine mode. We're going to bring him in here. And you can see that up here is a little slot for his head. So we're going to put him in right there, just like that. And now he is combined with his vehicle. And also the transformation gimmick is now unlocked. So we can transform him. Real quick, before we transform him, however, if you want to bring in the weapon, you can still do so by using the screw hole on top of lube right there. The weapon will actually peg into that. So if you still want to have the weapon combined, there he is. You can do that. So in vehicle mode, you can have all of the components attached to the vehicle. You don't really have any parts floating around and being loose. Now, real quick comparisons. Here he is with Generation 1 Mirage, which I have also reviewed. And I dropped this gun, which usually doesn't happen. Uh, this is actually usually a pretty secure connection. You can actually pick it up. And, of course, I'm in front of the camera, so, of course, today it's not working. Uh, but usually I don't have an issue with this, but we're just going to leave it right there. And again, uh, here he is with G1 Mirage, which I have reviewed in the past. If you want to check out the review to that, I'll put a card for it up here. And then for a more modern comparison, here he is with Combiner Wars drag strip. And I really like the way these guys look together. That They're just so comparable. That looks really, really nice. And uh, kind of makes me think like this was a missed opportunity. We could have had a repaint of, of this guy in this line here. That would have actually been kind of cool. So bring us uh, bring us some Power Masters back, uh, Hasbro. <laughs> we've, we've had Headmasters. We've had uh, Power Masters. Bring back the... Uh, um, uh, bring back Target Ma or not Target Master, bring back... Actually, we've had them all back, haven't we? We have Headmasters, we've had Power Masters, and we've had uh, Target Master, so... I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I digress. So, we'll <laughs> get Track Strip out of the way, and we'll get right into the transformation. We're going to remove his gun, and I just want to do this one more time, just to prove to you that it can be done. Ah, it's not going to let me prove it to you. Okay, we'll call that a fail. We're going to remove... <laughs> The engine, it's, that is the first time that has not worked for me. That has always worked. Of course, when I want to do it in front of the camera, it's not going to work. We're also going to remove the spoiler. So we're going to go ahead and take that, set it aside. We're going to come back to the figure here. And with the Power Master in place, you can actually go ahead and take the vehicle and split it in half. Putting the Power Master in place is going to move these hooks back, which will allow you to separate the vehicle. So we're going to get right here. We're going to take the front of the vehicle. We're going to split this by pulling down and out. Just like so, that is going to form the robot's legs. Take the spoiler and flip it over to the front, just like that. Come around to the back here. We can go ahead and take this panel and move it out of the way. So that is right there. Let's go ahead and move the camera up while we're here. We're going to take the rear of the vehicle and we're going to separate it and move it all the way up into the sides, like so. Now we can go ahead and bring the legs all the way up like this. And there is a little slot right there and a hook that these are going to tap into. So that's going to make the main body of the robot. Let's bring that up a little more. And we're going to work on the arms. We're going to bring this down, bring the fist out, and then rotate the rest of his forearm forward. Same thing on this side. Bring his fist out, rotate the arm forward. And then we're going to bring in this piece right here. And you're going to notice that there is a hole with a slot on the back. And there's a peg with a slot on this as well. So this is going to peg in right here. We can take the engine now and these two pegs are going to plug into these two ports right there. Just like that. Bring him back around, bring in his weapon and here is Slapdash in robot mode. And I think he looks pretty cool. Here in robot mode, Slapdash is approximately five and a half inches tall. And yeah, looks really good all the way around. Not a whole lot of backpack or cable or anything really hanging off of him. Looks really, really nice. My only really kind of minor gripe is that the legs are kind of like a one piece kind of thing. At least they went through the trouble of separating them. Sometimes the whole, you know, on some of these later figures, the whole side of a car, either the front or the back would just kind of flip around and be one piece that was supposed to be two legs. At least they did split them up some, so there's there's at least a little bit of separation there. His proportions are a little off, though. His legs are thin, and his, uh, ch uh, I don't know, his upper body is, like, real wide, and he's got the Popeye arms. But it's, it's a very kind of disproportionate figure. But I love it. I think it looks so, so cool. The articulation on this figure, of course, G1, hardly any. The arms can move forward right there at the shoulder, and they can... Also bend at the elbow. And of course, 
that movement is going to be severely limited because of the wheels right there. So really, you can just kind of move the arms a little bit up and down. That's going to be about <laughs> it. Nothing at the head, waist, or legs, or anything else like that. Now, again, for comparison, here he is one more time with Generations 1. Generation 1 Mirage. Let me get these guys refocused back in. So you can see what these guys look like together. And then one more time, we'll bring in Combiner Wars drag strip. So you can see what these guys look like together. And you can see he actually gets a pretty good size when in robot mode. Not bad at all. Really like this figure a lot. Now, one last thing that I like to do with this is I personally don't like displaying my figures on my shelf with the if I don't if I can absolutely get away with not doing it. I don't like the Power Masters being in the ports. Because the springs are compressed and just leaving them compressed for extended periods of time is just going to wear out the spring. So this figure gives us a really, really good option. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the Power Master. And you can see the little hooks right there moving back and forth. Now we can come around the back here. We can grab the engine and go ahead and pull this off. And we can take the engine and pop it back where it was in vehicle mode. And then we can go around the back here and we can take the power master and you see that slot right there is going to work well for the head and we can slide it right there this is a really good option this is my preferred option for displaying him because the power master is still integrated with the figure and also we have a good cover for the chest and of course the spring is not being compressed for an extended period of time so i really like i really do like the way this looks right there so yeah very cool figure again this is one of the ones that i found at my local meetup very recently and i was very very excited to get it it's my first time having a slapdash so my first experience with it and i was really really happy to get it and i think that about covers transformers generation one power master slapdash and lube what did you think of this figure? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see. Guys, we are losing our community settings. So the only way we're going to help this channel grow is by spreading the word. Share with your friends. If you like the videos that you are watching on my channel, please tell your friends about them. Have them come over, check the channel out, and subscribe. Please come back to the channel often. I usually put out one to two videos a week. So please be sure you're coming back and checking the channel so that you can see my new videos when they come out. I also have that donate button up at the top of the channel. If you want to hit on that, that would help the channel out tremendously. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you next time.